Have the light out and the first slide, maybe. as well start immediately and also uh, with a kind of semi-apology for maybe not making continuously explicit the connections uh, between this presentation and the subject of uh, complexity. But um, I think that one of the uh, crucial uh, areas where complexity uh, plays a role is uh, urbanism or is the formation of the city. And uh, what this lecture or this presentation wants to resist is the, uh, the kind of incredibly visual uh, compulsion in which, uh, with which we consider uh, complexity, what the uh, lecture really uh, kind of suggests and what I'm trying to uh, present is a kind of very complex reading of a kind of supposedly simple or simplistic uh, urban form. Uh, a form, and uh, as the title suggests, it is about Singapore, uh, one of the most um, denigrated cities, I would say, uh, in the recent uh, in recent memory. Uh, and I want to deal with some of these kind of the issues and the reasons for this uh, denigration. Uh, the title uh, is it is kind of really a chapter of a book, uh, and the title is called Songlines, and, and that is the Aboriginal songlines where the kind of mythology is uh, transferred from generation to generation in terms of uh, uh, a song. Uh, what this uh, the lecture is not only about Singapore, but it is also and kind of maybe in a, in a more important way about uh, the year or the period in the mid 60s, uh, uh, an attempted answer to uh, how demographic urgencies uh, that in uh, only in 1964 uh, seemed to offer a compelling argument and compelling support for the activity of planning, uh, for the notion of urban renewal for the profession of urbanists could in only 30 years so completely disappear or maybe a better word would be uh, to say could uh, uh, go so deeply uh, underground. I should also maybe uh, introduce uh, a personal note. Uh, I turned uh, eight uh, in the harbor of Singapore. Uh, we did not go on land uh, but I remember the smell. Uh, equal parts uh, sweetness and rot. Um, 30 years ago, uh, 30 years later, last year, I went uh, again to Singapore. Uh, the smell was gone, and what is more, uh, Singapore was gone. Uh, there was an, uh, in, and in its uh, stead, there was an entirely new city. Uh, almost all of Singapore is less than 30 years old now. The city represents the ideological production of the past three decades in their pure form, uncontaminated by surviving contextual remnants. It is managed by a regime that has excluded accident and randomness. Even its nature is entirely remade. Singapore represents a pure ecology of the contemporary. And it is uh, uh, that, of course, which is interesting, and I think an interesting subject for debate. It is pure intention. If there's chaos, it is an authored chaos. If it is ugly, it is a designed ugliness. If it is absurd, it is a willed uh, absurdity. Um, It is also uh, a strange uh, city, of course, and, and uh, therefore some part of the denigration is uh, very understandable. Uh, as some of you may have uh, read recently, William Gibson uh, described it as a Disneyland with a death penalty, which I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 you kind of conform, uh, you, you, you support my thesis. Uh, I think it is a very uh, bad thing for an American to say because uh, if Singapore is Disneyland with a death penalty that makes America Disneyland's with executions. Uh, but there, it is a kind of, uh, there is, it is a city uh, full uh, of weirdness uh, uh, and full of a kind of new relationship with the past. Uh, for instance, uh, these uh, slides which were made this morning uh, from uh, a kind of dummy of the book, uh, illustrate one of those uh, weird moments and one of the reasons why Singapore now is considered a caricature. Um, when the graph of uh, a mounting quantity of uh, tourism 
and the graph of a kind of descending, uh, descending graph uh, of historical presence uh, intersected uh, at some point uh, in five years ago in Singapore. In other words, when the tourism was increasing, but the histo history, uh, which was uh, supposedly the reason for the tourism, was decreasing, uh, the Singaporeans uh, invented a very original way. They didn't preserve more history, but they made an artificial intersection uh, in the center of uh, Singapore, at the site of the, uh, at the epicenter of the former uh, sex industry, a kind of uh, region, an intersection or a number of blocks that was known for uh, transvestite uh, nightlife. The re reconstructed uh, four blocks with an intersection in one of the streets as a market, and on the other uh, street there is a number of different restaurants. But superficial inspection, uh, this makes it you discover that behind the individuality of each of the restaurants there is one collective kitchen which serves with equal ease. Indian, Chinese, uh, Russian, and uh, other foods, and there is a kind of conveyor belt which has a kind of single, uh, uh, which does the dishes uh, in a kind of computerized way so that also the plates come back to the uh, right uh, restaurant. But uh, not only that, but uh, we were taken uh, with a sort of pride to the control room. Uh, where it turned out that hidden cameras are able to zoom in uh, on ed every market stall or zoom in on every table to make sure uh, that the transactions that take place there are uh, above board. Uh, uh, for Singaporeans, and one of their slogans is uh, suspicion breeds relaxation. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> For Singaporeans, uh, uh, it is a kind of efficient uh, de uh, way of dealing with a, a problem, and of course, uh, we cannot imagine imagine any pleasure in those uh, uh, conditions. But uh, I would say uh, that um, our uh, incapacity re to read Singapore on its own terms is frivolous. Our most sophisticated reflections on the contemporary condition of the city, a look beyond pity, shock, or irony, has become completely disconnected from the operational. Our incapacity to make the city has become internalized to the point that any evidence of its fabrication is by definition suspect and incredible. Singapore is a paroxysm of the operational, therefore inaccessible uh, to our uh, imagination. And further, another quotation from the text, Singapore uh, seems a melting pot that produces blandness and sterility from the most promising ingredients. And what I've been trying to do in this lecture is to decipher the tropes and kind of recreate its architectural songlines almost uh, in the kind of uh, search similar to genetics uh, analysis, uh, uh, contemporary genetics uh, analysis. Anyway. Singapore is a steadily growing island, one degree north of the uh, equator, on the most important passage between the Indian and Pacific Oceans. 650 square kilometers, it has 140 kilometers of coastlines, that is 20 kilometers less than the Berlin Wall. Um, and that I think is a significant uh, fact because I think the fact that it was an island, an, an, inc an isolated uh, incident, a limited territory, makes it uh, by definition uh, uh, a very important subject for uh, the establishment of laboratory conditions. In other words, experiments that cannot be organized on the scale uh, of an entire country can in nation states, uh, uh, and Berlin was a kind of similar experiment without any doubt, West Berlin, uh, be organized in a relatively pure form. So what is interesting about Singapore is that while here in the West we have been uh, increasingly in the uh, past 30 years become pessimistic about the m making of the city and the makeability of the city, uh, and about the makeability of the future, there is now uh, in Singapore a highly performing uh, alternative, a pertinent can-do world of clearly defined ambitions, long-term strategies, a ruthless determination to avoid the debris and chaos that democracy leaves in its wakes, wake everywhere. Um, I think that whatever we think and feel about it, we have to uh, deal with later. Sorry, this image is upside down, but it doesn't make uh, a lot of difference. Uh, Singapore was semi-independent in 59 and became completely independent in the 65. 
the Singaporeans, uh, there were 1.7 million at the time, inherited an extremely messy uh, colony, uh, basically swampland, marshland with uh, incredible slums, small clumps of colonial uh, presence, abandoned airfields, uh, squatters all over the island, an almost caricature of neglect. During the 50s, all visitors were struck by the extreme precariousness of living conditions, the misery of the vast majority. But as more conditions were constantly worsening, a galloping demography, omni uh, omnipresent tuberculosis, increasing joblessness, hyperdensity in inhabitable housing, all this against a background of economic stagnation. And so therefore, the uh, experimentation or the, the operation, the reinvention of Singapore by its own inhabitants or by its political regime started in a blatant and clear necessity to remake the island and even uh, was connected to an almost life and death struggle uh, for survival, which uh, I think uh, from the beginning gave this operation uh, a drive and an intensity. Uh, and also maybe uh, in the certain aspects a legitimacy that uh, has been uh, uh, underestimated in the West or not appreciated uh, in the West. Survival has been a structural and rationalizing center for the policies by which Singapore is governed since it gained the right to self-government in 59. The result was and continues to be an ideology that embodies a vigorous develop, developmentalist orientation that emphasizes science, technology, and centralized public administration as the fundamental basis for an export-oriented industrialization program financed largely by multinational capital. What happens in Singapore and uh, is uh, very radical that from the beginning, from the first moment in uh, 59 or semi-independent, uh, large areas of the uh, territory were completely transformed uh, by the government in an operation where you see the dark areas here of uh, very intense industrialization. The, the island, which was in a way the only capital that was there, was, uh, was turned into an, an almost synthetic platform uh, on which industry could be uh, established. The industry sometimes is built in factories that have, uh, they call it flatted factories, that have 12 layers. Parts of it were turned into harbor, and from uh, uh, now Singapore is the second largest harbor in the world, and the harbor where traffic passes uh, quickly. And also, equally quickly, these, uh, the city, the government started by creating enormous housing complex and new towns. Uh, around the city that uh, uh, were part of this transformation. Uh, a considerable uh, section of the island is denatured, and this denaturing began kind of here uh, in Jerome. And the first uh, housing project, uh, the first of many housing projects, was uh, Queenstown, and this is a kind of uh, typical uh, pro uh, prototype. It reflects the policy of the so called total environment. And then the usual cliches, a shopping center for each neighborhood, town center with cinemas, emporium, restaurants, nightclub, Japanese garden, sports complexes and the construction for neighborhood six. Uh, focal areas and open spaces around the housing blocks have been landscaped. The high-rise blocks located near primary and secondary schools. Frequent and efficient bus service crisscross the neighborhood. A vigorous social atmosphere is already evident. Queenstown can be said to have been lived in. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in other words, uh, uh, the uh, entire um, syndrome uh, where uh, Western societies have been uh, suffering, uh, that Western society has been suffering and increasingly uh, been resisting, has been imposed on Singapore in a drastic form, um, uh, in, in an extremely drastic form. And what is, of course, the interesting question is why something that increasingly doesn't work uh, here uh, seemingly works uh, there. Anyway, so f as of 59, the government was unleashed uh, or uh, embarked on a whole procedure of uh, self-rescuing, of remaking uh, the Ireland, island uh, as the only way of pulling out of the post-colonial uh, condition. Um, in, in this uh, climate, in 1963, 
uh, arrived uh, uh, commission of the United uh, Nations. And so what I'm trying to do is kind of really uh, uh, describe the episodes that are, are account for the present configuration and present uh, condition of Singapore and make a kind of cumulative uh, a description of all the kind of recent myths and recent themes that have been superimposed on there. So we have had the kind of post -col the colonial condition. We have now a first initial um, redesign according to very predictable uh, typologies: the typology of the housing project, the typology of industrialization, the, the beginnings of a scraping of the history uh, of the island. And now in '63, just before the island becomes independent. Uh, a, a UN commission visits the island and it has as its mandate the general development of the island with the specific objective of recommending the right strategy for urban renewal. So now uh, suddenly the island is, uh, and the question of urban renewal is raised here. It was an interesting commission uh, by one American, Charles Adams, one Japanese, Susumu Kobe, and one then stateless but formerly German, uh, Otto Koenigsberger, one a teacher at this uh, school. Um, the first role of the UN mission, uh, and that is how they see it, is to attack the model of the master plan, which is then in operation, which is a legacy of the uh, English, and which makes uh, every procedure to intervene in the substance of the city uh, very uh, complicated. It is too rigid, according to the Singaporeans, but also according to the UN experts, too rigid, especially in its uh, exclusive concentration on the built form. So. Um, like any master plan, they write, it applies in a, in a report which is still secret, a uh, society that is fundamentally conservative in outlook and practically unanimous in considering the preservation of the achievements and institutions of the past as the main objective of all planning. And this is an interesting thing to say for a UN commission. The UMI, uh, commi and then it says Singapore needs a more flexible plan, a more positive approach. And then uh, what is interesting is that in this positiveness they describe a new form uh, of planning or of considering the future. They propose, to, and this is a quotation, to guide, uh, accelerate and coordinate public development through the umbrella of a more fuzzy guiding concept to be decomposed in action programs comprehensive as so far as they should deal with all aspects of urban life, employment, shelter, communications, traffic, education, welfare, capital formations, stimulation of savings, community development, and public relations. So instead of a con concentration on form, uh, they suggest that a scenario should be written for the entire society, uh, perhaps, finally translated in a mosaic of action maps which will eventually cover the entire island. And that is another interesting gesture, where Singapore was a small city on a bigger island. They, they spread a blanket uh, on the entire island. The first principle should be the acceptance of Singapore Island and Singapore City as one unit. We must look at the island as an urban complex, which includes essential open spaces rather than a province or a country containing two different elements, a town and a rural hinterland. So. What they do with the kind of erasure of the precision of the master plan, the, the superimposition of uh, a more fuzzy logic, they describe a kind of undifferentiated condition, which will then more easily serve as an alibi for the attempt to renew the island uh, as a whole, and which makes it also easier for them to uh, really uh, uh, argue that the first thing that has to disappear uh, on this island is the city uh, as it is known then, or as it uh, is constituted uh, then. The central business district is flanked by mixed commercial and residential zones, the so-called Chinese shop houses, the vast majority of the city's substance of spectacular high density. Overcrowding of buildings and streets reaches proportions known in few other cities in the world. An earlier report by a UN expert found that substantial sections were ripe for demolition and rebuilding. In other words, from four years after its independence, they have a sanction from the UN to do with the kind of physical substance uh, 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 what they really want to do, which is basically to destroy it. So the superimposed on this reinvention of the island, there is now a sanction for a vast operation of urban renewal in its most drastic form. Uh, ironically, and this is uh, something that I think was fairly unknown, 
they propose a model uh, for uh, uh, Europe, for um, uh, Singapore as a whole, which is taken from the model of uh, the Netherlands. Um, they propose uh, this is the Netherlands. Uh, it is uh, uh, here is Amsterdam, The Hague, Rotterdam, and the Dutch have always been uh, very proud of the fact that this is uh, a so-called uh, circular city, uh, which has an empty center. Uh, uh, we can discuss endlessly how empty the empty is and how circular the circle is. <laughs> this is the kind of mythology of the Netherlands, and, and in the 60s it was a very potent uh, uh, model, uh, a city which didn't acquire uh, uh, physical density uh, necessarily because it was decomposed in smaller cities, but which nevertheless in its total uh, uh, presence uh, had the advantages of a metropolitan condition. So. Uh, almost secretly they project this model on Singapore as a whole. A chain or necklace of settlements around the central open area has been called a ring city. The idea comes from Holland, where a group of major towns including Amsterdam, Harlem, Utrecht, Delft, The Hague, Leiden, Dordrecht and Rotterdam forms a large circle around the central stretch of open country. This constellation is the result of historic forces rather than of deliberate planning, yet it has been found to have distinct advantages over other forms of conurbation. Each town of the ring uh, has remained and of the ring as compact and complete entity and preserved its character and individuality. At the same time, the inhabitants of each individual town can take advantage of the facilities offered by all the others because they can reach them quickly on roads crossing open country and not densely built up areas. They thus enjoy the social advantages of life in a small or medium sized community, a strong asset in the education of young people, together with the commercial advantages of a large conurbation. It is significant that the uh, eight Dutch town, which together form the Ring City, can manage with one international airfield situated in the central open space and therefore easily accessible to all of them. So now we have, coming out of the blue, uh, literally, uh, pro proposed by international bureaucrats uh, on the emerging substance of the city, uh, a formal model, which uh, will become the driving model of the city, even though uh, it will never be openly revealed to the population that this is the model. Uh, the UN report is still secret. And I think that is another f interesting f uh, addition to the uh, strange mixture of uh, uh, blatantness and secretiveness uh, with which uh, so far, the, the different uh, episodes uh, follow each other, each other. So the next phase, in uh, according to my text, is that uh, with these uh, uh, operations, now uh, Singapore uh, is free to become, uh, let's say in the later 60s and early 70s, the apotheosis of the tabula rasa. That the sanction of the UN report the Singapore bureaucracy is now unleashed uh, on a Promethean enterprise, limited only by the scale of the island, which is conceived as the apotheosis of the tabula rasa, the raised plain that is the basis for a genuinely new beginning. And of course, my interest in injecting the notion of the tabula rasa again is, uh, at the present moment, its uh, profound uh, unpopularity. Uh, apart from its uh, population, still firmly marooned in underdevelopment, Singapore has no resources except its land, its population and its geographical position. Analogous to the way poverty leads to prostitution, Singapore's transformation is conceived again and again in terms of work with or on the body of the island itself. Its territory, its ground, is the most malleable material. material. With the housing program and the UN vision, it is turned into uh, uh, to create sterile laboratory uh, uh, conditions for the importation of social and architectural substances that can be grown here under experimental conditions without the presence of interior cultures. Singapore is turned into a petri dish. Um, and this is true on uh, many uh, levels. Uh, one, some of the most spectacular uh, are, for instance, the transformation uh, of the island itself. You recognize the form, the dark areas are the uh, areas of physical extension uh, of Singapore. In 1959, the total size of the country stood at 
581 square kilometers, still unchanged in 65. It was since increased steadily, reaching uh, 626 kilometers in 88. In 91, it is probably 64, uh, 640 yeah. kilometers over. According to declarations made by the Minister of National Development, the expansion will continue, Singapore reaching 730 square kilometers by the year 2000. And if you compare this growth, growth of 25% in 35 years, it would be the equivalent in American terms of America growing uh, additional territory uh, of Texas, Georgia, and California combined uh, in a period of uh, 30 years. Uh, this enlargement is achieved through landfills that radically alter the geography of the island. Hills disappear. Here you see a section uh, of uh, in uh, 59. And here, essentially, <laughs> the same uh, area in, <laughs> in 87. Uh, and uh, hills, <laughs> hills disappear as the coastline expands. Singapore's becomes, Singapore becomes larger but flatter, more abstract. Later, <laughs> whole neighborhood whole neighboring islands were bought from the Indonesians to be swallowed and transported, eventually to reappear as part of Singapore. So not only uh, and the entire islands are simply erased from the uh, map of the world. Yeah. Um, so now then we go on. Uh, in this uh, delirium, it is a delirium uh, of uh, uh, transformation, uh, that is clear. Sing and, and what is happening now, Singapore regime, th through this very, uh, there is also a universal expropriation uh, of the islands, which, on the islands which laws which makes it possible for the state to disown, almost, uh, to disown any property, and in the history of the past uh, uh, 30 years, sometimes uh, properties have been disowned three times uh, uh, over 30 years, so that creates, gives an indication of the drastic nature. Singapore's regime installs a condition of permanent instability, which is not unlike that of the permanent revolution that the students of May 68 uh, were proclaiming at the same time, but with a confusion agenda. The common people can be made to follow a path, but not to understand it. The entire operation ambiguously combines the fulfillment of some basic human needs with a systematic erosion of others. Tradition, fixity, continuity, those are abandoned, uh, and the state is turned into a perpetuum mobile where what is given away uh, in a convulsion of uh, uprooting, what is taken away in a convulsion of uprooting, uh, a state of permanent disorientation and stability. And uh, what I find interesting, and here you see some of the uh, some of the uh, new cultural uh, material uh, or chromosomes, which are then kind of grown on these raised uh, plains. Uh, in, in other words, the, the Asian city uh, gets a kind of Asian, Asian uh, theme park. So, from a genuinely a Asian condition, it becomes a kind of theme park uh, condition. What is interesting is to compare this maybe also in the mid 60s, the emergence and the discovery uh, of semiotics uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, I think that Bart's uh, Systeme La Mode was published in 67, his Empire of Science, his Analysis of Japan in 69. What is interesting, what seems to happen in Singapore is that rather than semiotics as, a re as an analysis of existing um, uh, givens or existing cultural or artifacts, uh, it turns into a kind of prospective knowledge, an almost Machiavellian uh, uh, operation where Singapore isn't an emperor of science as Japan was, but an emperor of semiotics, uh, where uh, on this raw and near cleanly scraped planes, now experimental substances uh, are grown. Um, so, uh, and I think even think again, I uh, apologize for the fact that this is upside down. This is a kind of small uh, uh, collection anthology of all the things that were, are forbidden in Singapore. Uh, but if it were not upside down, it would simply uh, generate another belly laugh. So maybe it's better in this kind of intellectual position. Uh, 
Uh, but I, uh, I do believe that uh, uh, even the, the, the rich and seemingly uh, irrational catalog of things that are forbidden in Singapore have to be read in this kind of same, same semiotic uh, perspective and simply being uh, interpreted as an efficient way of advertising identity or, or as a new way of establishing identity. Just the same way as Nevada once reinvented itself by suspending the maximum number of laws and therefore uh, benefited from a kind of influx of crime. In the same uh, way, uh, uh, Singapore, and therefore money, Singapore uh, also designed its kind of legal space uh, in a way to also capture uh, a number of uh, attractive, uh, uh, attractive conditions. So, uh, now again in uh, 64, uh, there's a kind of parallel uh, movement. We can read uh, Singapore as an island where the regime uh, was consciously involved in uh, heightening or increasing or accelerated the metabolism of the uh, island uh, as a whole. And uh, maybe that at the time was a kind of very Asiatic uh, operation. Uh, in any case, uh, in the early 60s, there was, of course, also the emergence of the metabolist, metabolist uh, group uh, in Japan, who uh, I discovered had a very big influence in Singapore. And I think there was an analogy, therefore, in the, the um, ideology of the metabolist and some of the realities of, uh, and the potentials of Singapore. Uh, I will talk especially from uh, or about the architect uh, Maki, who had the most influence in Singapore. He wrote in 1963, there's nothing less urbane, nothing less productive of cosmopolitan mixture than raw urban renewal, which displaces, destroys, and replaces in that mechanistic order. And of course, uh, you can read Singapore uh, as a manifesto, uh, a political manifesto, which on the contrary is, has as, as its three mottos, displace, destroy, and replace. So in, at the first sight, there is seemingly no great uh, uh, and, uh, em empathy or sympathy between those uh, two uh, conditions. But what is interesting, Maki writes in investigations in collective form, uh, and in that, uh, in this kind of awareness of the lesser rigidity, the lesser stability of the city, and the greater fluidity and instability of the city, uh, he is not unlike uh, the UN Commission and also not unlike the Singapore regime. Our cities are fluid and mobile. It is difficult to conceive of some of them as places in the real sense of that word. word. How can an entity with no discernible be beginning or end be a place? It is certainly more apt to think of a particular part of the city as a place. If it were possible to articulate each of the parts of the city more adequately, uh, to give uh, qualities of edge and note uh, to now formless agglomerates, we would have begun to make our large urban complexes at least understandable, if not imageable. Uh, the language uh, uh, now becomes uh, very architectural. But what I want to, what I find really fascinating is, of course, that the emergence of the metabolist is the first time in 5,000 years mm -hmm. that there is a non-white uh, architectural avant-garde uh, after the Egyptians. Um, Um, so Maki begins to, or, or the metabolists are rethinking uh, the city, uh, and he uh, identifies three uh, forms of composition. Uh, they're uh, represented there above. Uh, compositional, which is roughly speaking modernistic. Uh, mega form, which is roughly speaking um, mega structures. And group form, which is clearly the substance for which uh, Maki has the most uh, uh, sympathy. Our concern here is not then the master plan, and here he echoes the UN, but the master program, there he echoes the UN again, is a physical correlate of the master program. There are master forms which differ from buildings in that they respond to the dictates of time. So again, instability, and in this kind of small scale, small kind of model, you see that uh, it is basically uh, uh, interpreted as an accumulation of forms 
uh, which uh, don't necessarily all have the same lifespan and can be uh, changed uh, and transformed uh, over time. Then he says something important uh, for Singapore. The most important factor in group form is the treatment of mediating uh, public spaces. I attempt to show that creating organic public spaces centering on traffic focal points throughout the city would significantly affect the rehabilitation of city centers. He almost speaks in a biological or maybe acupunctural uh, sense. In terms of urban design, we must create city corridors, city rooms, and uh, this is a famous one of those uh, pro proposed city rooms that he conceived. Um, and transportation exchanges at, at strategic points in the city. And second, we must realize that, there, that these new focal points become uh, urban energy generators. And then he describes the city is no longer uh, a collection of uh, uh, forms, but a pattern uh, of events. So then, uh, these were ideas that were uh, injected uh, in Singapore, partly uh, by uh, Maki himself here. Uh, and I think that this is the city uh, as uh, a uh, collection uh, of events where the form, again, does not uh, be, it's not so uh, important, but where it is really the uh, circulation and the fluidity uh, of the events bec uh, between the form, which becomes important. What is also interesting is that uh, Maki uh, injects uh, in all his uh, uh, work, or that in all the work of Maki, shopping is incredibly uh, important. <laughs> he is, uh, yeah, again, the laughter, I mean, this is kind of, it, it, you couldn't make me happier in terms of your uh, 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 obvious prejudices. Um, <laughs> Uh, it is uh, in the Asiatic, uh, uh, the, the Asiatic condition is different from the Western condition, where in the West shopping has become maybe a kind of degenerated uh, consumer frenzy. Uh, it is clear that uh, in uh, the uh, metabolist uh, shopping stands for uh, a kind of Asiatic uh, form of life, life as an intensification. And also, if you can really read and see their project, it is clear that they are never composed of the kind of large, uh, vacant uh, volumes uh, in which our uh, ele shopping elements is contained, but that they are made up of kind of uh, infinitely small modules, uh, kind of functoids, where, uh, for instance, uh, next to a Chanel boutique, there can be uh, um, um, an Indian restaurant. Uh, in, in a way which uh, is as close to this programming as anything uh, invented by the uh, Western uh, avant-garde. Uh, anyway, almost illustrating their thesis. Anyway, uh, Sing Maki made a few uh, uh, visits to Singapore in the mid-60s, but also some of the Singaporean uh, intellectuals were uh, sent to uh, America uh, to be trained in schools like uh, Harvard, uh, where Maki was also at some point the train. So connections were made, not always in Asia, but uh, certainly about Asia. And in the mid-60s, again, superimposed over the statist uh, model of transforming the state, there became uh, a int more intellectual uh, layer, a more uh, ideological layer, which was interested in exploiting these conditions for the explicit aim of creating and inventing a new Asian city. And two of its most uh, uh, stimulating uh, authors still work active in uh, uh, Singapore are Lin and Tig, both uh, with American uh, training in their background. Now, after, and here is one of the, they published a magazine called uh, Spur, and in Spur, in uh, 1960, a very impressive ma magazine in the sense that in 180 pages, published over two years, there are only three drawings, um, which uh, for me is a kind of monumental uh, feat of seriousness in architecture. Uh, but uh, this is one of the three drawings, uh, and uh, it represents the future uh, of Asian cities. And of course, we may be kind of astonished that uh, an Asian city 
is so that we recognize so few Asian elements in the Asian uh, city, but it is clear that for them embarked and enlisted in the operation of modernization, that they are uh, of, the end of transformation of Singapore, the Asian in a kind of metaphorical se sense is only a diversion and a kind of re uh, recessive gene uh, almost. Um, so they describe the uh, Asian city, imagine a city where we have dwellings that stretch upwards toward the sky, and beneath them people humming with activity in the business houses, governmental offices, educational centers, theaters, open spaces, and recreational centers, where the various centers of activity are, are linked up. Linkage was very important, whether it was in Team 10 or with the metabolist. Centers of entertainment and culture in the heart of the cities that light up in the evening. Imagine clean parks and roads free from scores of hawkers, and street vendors, in other words, even the progressive part of the architectural uh, world uh, declared itself against street hawkers, vendors and open drains unlittered. This is our Asian city of tomorrow. Um, so there we uh, are, uh, almost not even 10 years in the independence of Singapore, we're superimposed over the primitive uh, approach of the regime. There is now a more ambi ambitious uh, metabolist influence, um, uh, new layer, new <coughs> authority, and uh, the government is, uh, apart from transforming on, on, on its own initiative uh, vast uh, areas of the island, I think that uh, at this moment 80% uh, of the service of the island is different from uh, what it was in uh, uh, 1960. Uh, also embarks in the city, uh, downtown Singapore itself, on a program which is called Sales of Sites, where new sites are uh, assembled and sold to private enterprise, uh, so that there is a balance between, uh, on one end, the kind of status-driven housing estates and the private enterprise involved in reconstruction of the new city. And here you see, uh, as part of these silky sites, uh, two sections of Singapore that are uh, will be transformed in the first and, as f in my knowledge, almost only kind of metabolist uh, kilometers uh, in the world. Uh, partly by here you see some of this uh, architecture. Uh, it is an architecture that if you didn't do some research in metabolism, you wouldn't uh, really understand it. But it's unbelievably raw, concrete. Uh, an aesthetic, uh, sometimes with rounded corners, uh, 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 but uh, extremely uh, impressive in uh, their uh, sheer accumulation of uh, different uh, activities and kind of richness, which is, is almost un unparalleled. And here, uh, one building by Tay, which uh, also in its architectural terms is incredibly impressive. So the, the one is on uh, beach well, the other accumulation of these kind of similar buildings is on uh, a ring road here. The brutality of these buildings uh, is astonish, astonishing. They're very uh, hard to uh, identify in the sense that they change, uh, very, uh, they change color very often because the concrete has to be uh, painted uh, all the time. Um, and, uh, but in these buildings and in the circle of these buildings, which, complete, which consists completely uh, of uh, extremely small uh, kind of shopping entities, shopping then in the Asian sense, there are uh, excavations of void spaces which correspond exactly to these uh, city rooms notions as they were uh, injected by Maki. Two interlocking atriums at the same time, uh, uh, that was at the time an entirely new and daring concept. The main interim, which we call the city room, was inspired by the ideas of the metabolist group in Japan, Lim Wright, and Maki himself, visiting during construction, commented, we theorized and your people are getting it built. So it, it was for me a very important moment to, to be able to prove that, that there was theory underlying uh, something as seemingly shapeless and, and mediocre uh, as Singapore. Uh, in these projects, the center of Singapore was theorized as a first manifestation of the modern Asian metropolis, the city a system of interconnected urban chamber, eight chambers, Asian in the sense that the climate alone traditionally limits street life, 
uh, and therefore makes the interior the privileged domain for the urban encounter. Shopping in this idealist Asian context is not just the status-driven compulsion that it has become here, but an amalgam of sometimes microscopic, infinitely varied functional constellations in which each stall is a functoid of an overall programmatic mosaic that constitutes urban life. In the late 60s, Singapore architects synthesizing influences of Le Corbusier, Smith and Tim Ten, uh, self-consciously Asian speculations derived from Maki and a new Asian self-consciousness crystallized, defined and built ambitious prototypes with vast modern circles teeming with the most traditional forms of Asian street life, extensively connected by multiple <coughs> linkages and fed by more modern infrastructures, sometimes barbell-like multi-level car parts penetrated by proto-atriums and supporting vast office hotel mixed use towers. Containers of urban multiplicity, heroic captures and intensifications of urban life in architecture. And of course, all these things have been uh, around as myth, but uh, have been also discredited or abandoned as myth, maybe uh, through our sheer inability to, to produce them. Rare demonstrations of the kind of performance that could and should be the norm in architecture, giving an alarming degree of plausibility to the myth of the multi-level city and a megastructure that we, in infinitely more affluent circumstances, have discredited and discarded. So, that is really the, uh, for me, uh, stupendous uh, situation uh, there. And, of course, it is uh, uh, hard to find. And, of course, we are now, in a, again, after this experimentation, in a new and, and very different uh, condition of Singapore, because now, uh, you could say, uh, Singapore is finished. And so the last uh, chapter of the book inevitably uh, is called Promethean Hangover, uh, or the second lap, the next lap. From a single teeming Chinatown, Singapore has become a city uh, has Singapore has become, like any city, a city with a Chinatown. Um, as a former theater of the Tabula Rasa, Singapore now has the tenuous quality of a freeze frame, uh, as in a film that is suddenly stopped, of an arrested uh, movement that can be set in motion again at any time on its way to yet another transformation. It is perpetually being morphed to the next state. And I was, I just heard that there was uh, an, a kind of complaint, I think Charles made it, about the stability of architecture. If you want unstable architecture, uh, Singapore is your uh, condition. Uh, uh, no, no, not only is uh, nothing older than uh, 30 years, but uh, it also looks as if nothing will ever be older than 50 years. Um, uh, and uh, in that sense, uh, and uh, in that sense, I think it is a very um, apart from being shocking, also liberating in uh, the sense that uh, we don't have to consider the decisions in architecture uh, as uh, uh, eternal decisions or as uh, decisions that um, uh, impose uh, eternal conditions. Um, the curse of the tabula rasa is that once introduced, uh, it does not uh, prove, pre it, it, not, it does not only prove previous occupancies occupancies expendable, but through their very elimination that prospectively each future occupancy is provisional too and expendable. Singapore is therefore doomed to, to be the city of the tab permanent tabula rasa, a Potemkin metropolis. And uh, that is very, uh, and here, this is the Potem Potemkin metropolis, all the horizons blocked by completely new uh, uh, construction, uh, the landscape uh, completely uh, remained uh, uh, themed, uh, but uh, already the first signs are going on of kind of bulldoz bulldozers uh, 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 redesigning the new uh, uh, or beginning the new the next phase of uh, destruction. And um, I want to end the lecture maybe by. <coughs> The anxiety, and I think it is uh, very clear here, the anxiety in, induced by the precarious status, status of Singapore's reality is exacerbated uh, in the absence of a geometric stability, a formal or even conceptual frame 
a guiding concept, uh, a definitive prognosis of the island's uh, status and configuration, uh, which the Manhattan Grid once was, which in a way didn't uh, preclude any development, but nevertheless introduced uh, a stability that that contained those uh, developments. The courage to erase had not in, has not inspired a new conceptual model, a stable medium of inscription. Uh, an urban presence independent of the built substance. Singapore's planning, the mere sum of, sum of presences, is aformal, has no form, makes no claims to stability, it, su it surprisingly emerges, seemingly from nowhere, and can be cancelled and erased equally abruptly. The city is like a collage without a background. The resistance of these assembled buildings to form a recognizable ensemble, they remain similarly singular, creates intentionally or not a condition where the exterior, the classical domain of the urban, is considered a residue, uh, uh, a kind of short-circuited leftover space, overcharged with the reconstructed tropicality of its landscape, hyper densities of trivial commandments, uh, public art, the commercial effluence from the hermetic interiors, is, uh, um, and so on and so forth. Um, here you see the, the let's say the drama that, that all these um, fragments, uh, some of them kind of highly charged, highly urban and highly innovative, are doomed to float over the surface without uh, any conception of uh, uh, permanence. Singapore is a city without qualities. Maybe that is the ultimate form of deconstruction and even of freedom. Uh, but its evolution, its song line continues. From enlightened post-war UN uh, triumvirate, first manifestation of a belated Siam apotheosis, metabolist metropolis, now it is dominated by a kind of Confucian postmodernism. The brutal early housing slabs are rehabilitated with postmodern ornament. In the center, on newly reclaimed land, the last closing pieces are being fitted with contextual masterpieces by Botta and a posthumous Sterling. And I think that is... Uh, <coughs> so, in this climate of gloom, the Promethean hangover, uh, the uh, regime changed and uh, is also becoming more, supposedly, more open to freedoms. The new theme is living the next uh, lap. Uh, which in itself has a kind of inbuilt, uh, for me, uh, sadness, that after the first one, the second, and the third, a kind of moving without uh, really making any progress. The city is uh, continuously uh, bombarded with new, new and, and charged, hopefully charged with new themes. It is now a city of tropical excellence, so which is the ultimate paradox, that uh, uh, the, the kind of, of outside residue which the hermeticness of all the buildings uh, completely uh, reject is now the main carrier of meaning. And the last uh, two operations are a kind of frantic planting of nature and trees. Uh, in some cases, uh, nature is again reconstituted after the buildings uh, are taken down. And maybe the most uh, poetic uh, example is the uh, newly uh, uh, creating uh, creating around the entire island uh, and uh, it's a continuous uh, synthetic uh, beach, which uh, with all of Singapore's extensions will surely be uh, one day as long as uh, uh, once the Berlin Wall was. Uh, our vision is uh, an island with an increased sense of islandness goes this new and softer Singapore, more beaches marinas, resorts, and possibly entertainment parks, as well as better access to an attractive coastline and a city that embraces the waterline more closely in a signal of its island heritage. Singapore will be cloaked in greenery, both manicured by men and protected tracts of natural growth, and with water bodies very woven into the landscape. Thank you. Yeah. Question? We're good. Some of those um, scripts that you use at the end, when I share with you many of your concerns about uh, Singapore, it's really an exercise in conflict theories. 
superimposing uh, European values on the situation, which obviously we don't understand. Uh, the impermanence, the chaotic nature of it, the lack of an overall geometric form, these are precisely descriptions of the aims of the city, uh -huh. certainly being applied to Tokyo. Uh -huh. And uh, I find it strange that certainly Singapore is a sterile place, but uh, you seem to have missed the point. Okay. Okay, that's a comment. Thank you. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> or first question, I should say. Charles? Um, Rep, I, I don't know quite the uh, uh, um, You know, in the 60s, they said uh, if you want to see, if you want to, if you want to study America, go to Japan if you want to study American economics. And in a certain way, you know, the four little dragons, the four little tigers, uh, Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, and uh, Thailand, other places like that now, are an advanced form of either modernism, high modernism, late modernism, late capitalism, or whatever, or certainly the world uh, corporate culture. Yeah. That's descriptively. In, in its modernized, in its intense moder modernizing, in the sense that Seoul went from <clears throat> a kind of pre-industrial, pre-modernism to a modern society in 15 years, and then a post-industrial, post-modern society in another 15 years. So these cultures have never have seen things that have taken us a thousand years in the West. And they're ultimately uh, places where modernization is successful for a moment. And Partly, it seems to me, your attraction is uh, on that level. In other words, here's a modernization that works. It worked to a degree, right? And that's attractive because, as you admit, and, and uh, without any regrets, it doesn't work here, or it's failed to work here. But you've always been attracted to a modernization that might work. And so how, why is it working there? Why is, say, Hong Kong uh, so successful? At the same time that you admit, that it's, and these are your words, as mediocre as Singapore is. And you, you admit, without uh, blushing, it's mediocrity, without even an argument, on a certain level. Um, and you uh, are attracted by this. Now, what is missing from your description is why uh, Singapore is so successful. Uh, and of course, it's the whole world market. And for Hong Kong, it's the funnel of China. And if you put in then that the missing context for that city, state, and the others, then you see it is a kind of moment. Um, I'm sorry, this is not so much a question uh, as a comment, but I, I'm trying to explore what I find a kind of hidden description in your part becoming an apologetic, I think. Maybe it's not an apologetic. Maybe while you're describing it, you're just saying, look at it, because you have so many prejudices that you fail to see that it's there. Or are you saying somehow, are you putting it forward prescriptively as something we should emulate? Um, let me just, uh, every time I hear a racist remark, I reach for my footnote, and it's Maki uh, got his, uh, you know, his three types of collective forms on from Kevin Lynch. So it wasn't uh, the first uh, new avant-garde uh, non-white avant-gardism, and in fact, all white, black uh, you know, uh, firsts are wrong. Uh, anyway, that's kind of a way. But, no, but it, it, in a way, there's a kind of way you're, you are making, let's look to Asia now, uh, us in the West, because that's where modernization works. Are you saying that? No, the, it's not necessarily, necessarily what I'm saying, but uh, and, and in, to some extent, I would l like to um, limit the, the whole subject to Singapore because um, some of the other uh, conditions I simply uh, don't know enough about to uh, uh, to be able to say anything uh, intelligent about it. But what I find maybe the most um, interesting phenomenon, and, and this is really uh, separate from, from the idea of uh, whether it is modernization is successful or not, or a failure, uh, a failure here or any success there. But I find the most interesting and, and disturbing hidden uh, theme in the background is that 
somehow uh, the a discussion about numbers uh, and about demographics and about um, demographic urgencies <laughs> and about um, statements which had to do, for instance, with the fact that uh, in, uh, 19, in the early 60s there was a theory that in the next, I think, 30 years the entire substance of the, America, uh, the, the United States of America had to be rebuilt. The, that this whole discussion of numbers has completely been evacuated from architecture and that we are therefore living on a kind of curious uh, time bomb of something that kind of as we are not dealing with it uh, is happening in the in the form of you know, endless proliferation around the kind of cities and around the, in other words I think that uh, modernization works here as well in other words uh, we uh, are continuously looking at Paris and we just look at the center of Paris we look at Singapore and then we say well modernization works maybe there but it doesn't work here in the meantime the whole of Paris has been extended with a kind of area which is probably if you count it 50 times the surface of the uh, entire, entire Paris and it's simply invisible to us or we ignore it it's not there so in other words I wouldn't my argument is not so much that uh, there is a different modernization here and there, but actually that there is uh, a pervasive modernization everywhere and that uh, somehow at some point there was a way in which architecture was connected to it in a semi-positive form and that uh, this connection has been seemingly uh, broken and it's got a pretty irrevocable uh, turn into a disconnection. Huh? <coughs> Go back to the Kevin Lynch yeah. Major the City uh, uh, reference because um, I've struck. Uh, by the way, talking about that, I was not saying that no, no, no. Mackey had invented it, but I think the metabolists were the first time that there was an, a non white avant garde, because regardless where they got their sources from. My point was going to be that huh? I was struck by how you've managed to talk about modernization as it applied to Singapore without ever really dealing with colonial issues at all. And it seems to me that that relation uh, of Kevin Lynch's work to Marquis's uh, writing um, is pertinent in that respect. Um, I actually go to Singapore every month, and so it's extremely hard to come from the Singapore ball. But uh, you know, there's a there's yeah, well, side to it that is <laughs> quite <laughs> intriguing to me, which is that since 1965, and the Lee Kuan Yew and the Zayn Party came to power and then we maintained that control over the island, um, but urban regeneration policy has actually changed much more drastically and more frequently than the distinction of time. Well, maybe then I seem to be able to do in a single lecture, but... Uh, yeah, but you're, you, you, you're using um, Singapore as, uh, as, a, as a model to, to uh, just, just simply to portray it as if it's been stripped down. Right. And the sectional diagrams are interesting to me in that respect because it makes so convincing that I've got a little bit flat. You know, yeah. John Fortman comes along and Kevin Roach comes along and Kurokawa comes along and so on. They dump their little objects all over it. Um, um, with the highway system that's going on, uh, the American freeway system, but um, superimposed on a plan which was actually made by the British, by Stanford Raffles, in negotiation between Chinese, Malay, and Indian, and British particular groups. And that's, that still exists. It has not been substantially David. raised. Do you have a question? Because uh, they can't hear you. And right. If it's a personal discussion between the two of you, it's okay. But if you yeah, have it's, a question. Not, it's just that my point is, it's not really a question, it's a point, is that, is that the presentation has been made about it in a way that, that, ex, that actually excludes and reduces the potential for the discussion of that, that there was there and the discussion of that island because of its um, complex post-colonial condition that it's in now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any questions? <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, Last question, yeah, first question. Two questions. Um, two questions. Are these some big questions that I can obviously No, 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 no. little questions. Yeah, little questions. Two little yeah. questions. Do you perceive a kind of correlation between the rise of postmodern culture in the West, which also pushes off the very influential in the whole world, and the rise of Far East, which seems to be superficially materialistic and uh, Political. Okay, let's answer that question. That's a good question. Wait, yeah. let's not do both. Let's, no, just, that's it. let's just answer <laughs> yeah, that question. Very interesting question. 
Is there a relationship between the rise of postmodernism in the West and the new discovery and the rise of uh, the reactivation of the East? Mayor, can you answer it then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. There is clearly, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, clearly yeah, yeah. a relationship. It's a clearly a relationship, and you can. I think you can do it in either pessimistic terms of late late capitalism, or you can do it in semiotic terms of the distribution of signs, or you can do it in global economic terms. But it would seem to be impossible not to see a relationship and not to have that relationship be part of any theorization. Uh, in particular, a theorization which would end. Um, exhausted ideas, political ideas, like colonialism. But Jeff, I think he was asking what are the ethical dimensions of that relationship? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Nice, short, interesting question. What are the ethical no, dimensions? No, 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 I'm not here from the rim. What are the ethical dimensions? What are the ethical dimensions of that relationship? What did you say? I said you've been a lot more perverse than me over the years uh, about the quotation with the modernization, which is really tunneling badly into a nightmare. And you've chosen probably the worst nightmare uh, in a scenario of the era and said, I'm not afraid to go in there and recreate it, which I think is somehow quite brilliant, recreate it with details, build it up, create a total late 20th century ecology out of it. And now I want to know, really, I think everybody really wants to know, uh, you know, what I think about what are the guiding get? Yeah, what are the guiding principles of the gestures that will be made? Can you hear the question, San Francisco? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Briefly, uh, having re perversely recovered what seems to be in every way a discredited and, and uh, unacceptable mode of development, and 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 produce a recuperative reading of that, what is your evaluation and what principles do you draw from it? Might be zone, whatever that was. <laughs> I think it's, um, it's for me too early. Well, I think that uh, I could, and, and this is the difficulty. I mean, since I'm uh, working as an architect, I'm not working as a kind of theoretician. And so part of my answers are present in my work. And in that sense, uh, uh, for instance, there is a connection between uh, this reading of uh, Singapore and a kind of recent project that I did for the uh, for La Défense in Paris, where I also propose that kind of considering the, the tenuous uh, nature and the tenuous stability of recent architectural production, which is not only uh, kind of a matter of Singapore, but which is actually, I think, uh, an, an almost worldwide uh, uh, condition. But therefore, it is becomes important to look at it with uh, different eyes and also to ask uh, different uh, questions from it and, and also to propose even in Europe, the question whether uh, context ought to be and ought to remain as stable as it is in general considered to be, and uh, uh, whether there is something uh, special about uh, a mediocre building in, uh, or something different about a mediocre building in Singapore or a mediocre building in in the outskirts of Paris, and uh, and if the answer is no, to treat it in the same uh, manner. And uh, so in that sense, there is a kind of communicating currents uh, between the work. And, and so therefore, I am clearly unwilling to, to give now my personal opinion about Singapore. Uh, but I think that the, mean, the, the opinion has to be reconstructed uh, from the work. OK, I'm going to, uh, we're going to take a 20-minute break. The formal presentations um, of the conference are finished. When, when we reconvene, we will have an informal discussion so, wait, 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 uh, among the participants in the audience in which many of the issues that I've uh, abruptly stopped the discussion in the middle of, we can take back up again for an additional 45 minutes. So we're going to take a 20-minute break. Let me thank Graham Coolhouse for the presentation. Thank you.